A lot of the impact of clothes comes from proportion. Whether something looks small and packed and neat, or whether it looks relaxed and laid back. And a tailored jacket has more of those things that you can manipulate and change in terms of proportion to achieve certain effects. And I find it absolutely fascinating how, over time, tailors have manipulated these things in different ways to achieve certain things, either because fashions have changed or because they, as a particular house or a tailor, want to give a certain style to the client. So today in this video, we're going to look at the major aspects of a jacket, things like the shoulder, the lapel, the length, and talk about how those affect the overall impact that a jacket has. And then in subsequent videos, we're going to compare this to other jackets to look at the differences. This is also quite a nice accompaniment to a series we have on the website, permanentstyle.com, where I go through every bespoke jacket or suit that I've ever had made and talk about these proportions and how they vary from tailor to tailor. If we start at the beginning, the most important parts are the shoulder and the chest. Generally, the top half of the jacket is what gives the biggest impression of size or strength to the wearer. They're also nearest the face, which again is going to be the most important. For example, we start with the shoulder. This can look, seem pretty straightforward. You cut it to the size of your natural shoulder and it goes down into the sleeve. But there actually there are three major things that give a big impact to how that shoulder looks. The first one is the amount of padding in the shoulder. So this jacket, for example, actually has quite a lot of padding in it. And that means that the jacket sits higher on the wearer's shoulder. It could have less padding and then be more natural and lower and perhaps more sloped from the neck as well. The second thing that makes a difference is the size of the shoulder. Now, no matter where the person's natural shoulder ends, there's always a little bit of variation where the tailor can cut it slightly further out from the jacket and make it wider, or they can push it in on the wearer and make their shoulder look smaller and run down that way. And the third big thing that you can change is what's often called the roping, which is basically the wadding or extra material used in the top of the sleeve here, the sleeve head, to make it either very, without any, makes it very natural, so you just run straight down like a sweater, or pushes it up and actually creates something which gives impact to the end of the shoulder. It comes like a full stop that make, tell, tells you where the shoulder ends. Some people like that because it suggests that perhaps the eye runs to the end of the shoulder and makes you look, look, to look bigger. Others suggest that actually it kind of brackets the shoulder and makes you look smaller. The next thing that's important is the chest of the suit. So you basically have two options here. Either it can be cut very close to the wearer, and some tailors, particularly French tailors, for example, feel that cutting it very close is quite sexy. Other people, for example, those that cut in the um, English drape cut tradition of tailoring, feel that they want to give a bit of extra room to the chest. And they'll, they'll manipulate the canvas inside and also cut differently to give greater space in here, makes your chest look bigger. So again, it depends which impact you're going for. The next important thing is the lapel. Now, it won't surprise you to learn that the lapel makes a big impact. It's the kind of thing that often you notice very quickly on a suit. And the point that people most often emphasize or notice is the width of the lapel. This is usually a question of balance between here and the edge of the sleeve and where the edge of the lapel sits. And a bigger lapel, again, would make the chest look a bit bigger. Perhaps a smaller lapel would, make the, would emphasize height and a long line up the chest. But there's also some more subtle things to the lapel. So for example, the actual angle that the lapel runs here, at first glance, this looks quite straight, but actually it runs a very subtle curve what's sometimes called a belly, from the waist button all the way up. This is used more on English suits and somehow looks sharper. And perhaps counterintuitively, if that line was cut straight, because of the way the jacket falls, it would look to run outwards and kind of run to the outside of the shoulder, which is something that, again, more Italian or Neapolitan tailors often use. Next is the position of the notch here, between the collar and the lapel. Again, if you have the notch higher on the body, then perhaps it makes the person look taller, and that's been a fashion in recent years. If the notch is lower, some people might think that that emphasizes the chest because it makes this area, gives emphasis to this area, and makes that look broader. Again, often more traditional suits, all the suits have that, and perhaps fashion is heading in that direction as well. And there's lots of tiny little things around the lapel that we won't look at now, but we could go into more detail about. For example, the gorge line here that joins the two this slopes quite a lot downwards. Other tailors prefer it to be heading more horizontally. So this line here would be more horizontal because they think that makes the chest area look bigger by leading the eye outwards. 
And there's lots of other small points, like the um, position of the chest pocket, for example, or the width of the sleeve. But those are fairly minor points compared to everything else we've talked about. The next big one is the position of the waist button here. Now this is a two button jacket. On a three button jacket, we had an extra one, it'd still be this waist button that was the most important. And again, on a one button jacket, that's the only one. This really is the fulcrum around which the entire top half turns. It's this that gives definition to where the chest and where the lapels sit, what is defined as the top half. And that's changed radically over the years. In the 80s, that was super low. People wanted to look as big as possible in the top half of their torso. In recent years, as jackets have got shorter, this has got higher and higher, to the point where it's really sitting in the middle of the chest. And finally, there's the bottom half of the jacket. Now, as I said at the beginning, that's the section which people notice the least and perhaps the least important, but it is still quite significant. On this jacket, for example, an English cut jacket, this is from Catherine Sargent, cut in a Fox Air cloth from Fox Brothers. You can see that the, this section here is relatively closed. There isn't much of a gap between the sections at the bottom. And the line from the waist button down to the hem here is also relatively straight. On some jackets, Neapolitan jackets, for example, this would be much more open. And that line here would be much more curved. It would be running outwards. And that has the effect of making the whole jacket seem more relaxed, more at ease, more open, particularly when it's combined with that straight lapel. So you're running all the way down in a curve through into the bottom of the jacket as well. So those are the major aspects of a jacket, how tailors manipulate certain things to get a particular effect. In the next video, we'll compare this jacket to a Neapolitan one and talk about the differences. For more practical information and reviews of artisans, check out permanentstyle.com, the UK's leading website on craft and classic style.